What do you love to do? What do you do well? Minuteman is for anybody. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. Minuteman has something for you. Everyone comes from different towns, different backgrounds, and we all come together to do what we're passionate about. You have your major every other week, which is so interesting. You get to study what you want to learn about, which is something you thought you'd have to wait till college to get to. I came to Miniman hoping to get hands-on experience and Miniman definitely met and exceeded those expectations. For my senior project, I'm making a ball bearing pusher for a skateboard, so I'm going to design the parts, I'm going to write the code out, and I'm going to machine them and I'm super excited to get started on that project. So we're like a normal high school in every other way. You have all your academic classes, but then you're getting your vocational piece and you're leaving with all these certifications that normal high school students wouldn't have. You can't really understate coming out of high school with uh, certifications. It just gives you such a competitive edge on anybody else out there. Miniman has allowed me to get into a career path where I make good money and I enjoy the work I do. Minuteman prepared me for college life. I now go to Carnegie Mellon University. Minuteman was the right choice for me because I had the chance to stand out and really leave a legacy behind. We help kids discover what do they love to do and what do they do well. Once the kids discover that, we combine those real world skills that we're gonna teach them in their field of their choice with high caliber, blue ribbon quality academics we put them together, and that's something that we only do here. That's what we call the revolutionary advantage here at Miniman. There is no one that I've talked to that's ever said, I want to transfer out, I don't want to come here anymore. And I think it's great because everyone wants to be here. I think the new building is honestly such an advantage. In biotech, for example, we have bioreactors, we have everything you need to do, dissections, and we have incubators, we have a tissue culture room, all of which you would find in real labs. But the building isn't what makes this place special. It's the community that you'll feel when you're in it. We still have all the sports and clubs, so you have everything that a normal high school would have. My soccer team and I have been all the way and back. We've been through a lot. They're basically my family. My shop's my family. It's always just a very positive vibe, and that's what I think Minuteman's really about, is everyone helps each other work towards their goals. I love it, yeah. I love coming here every day. It's, it really makes me happy. We can't wait to welcome you to Minuteman. What do you love to do and what do you do well? These are questions that all high schools in Massachusetts should be asking their students, and it's really a foundation of what we do here at Minuteman High School. My name is Anthony Chiariello. I am the Assistant Principal for Admissions here at Minuteman. I am coming to you live from our broadcast theater, which is the home of our multimedia engineering uh, career and technical education major. And I'm uh, very excited to talk to everyone this evening. Um, I'm going to just kind of quickly go over our agenda. So first is a little bit of an overview. I'll talk a little bit about my own experience and, and what Minuteman's all about. Uh, I'll talk about you know our 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 career and technic our career tree and our educational model, which we refer to as education with a purpose. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about our freshman exploratory, um, which is an important program for all um, ninth grade students. I'll do a little overview of our academy model, the opportunities and advantages that have that students have here at Minuteman. We'll talk about the application process, and then we'll have time for some question and answers. Um, I'm also joined here by four of our uh, current parents, um, and you're going to hear from them over the course of the evening and, and, and their experience as well as their students' experience. So, you know, I want to talk, tell you a little bit about myself um, and my experience in high school because I want you thinking back to your own experiences in high school when you kind of start thinking about whether Minuteman is the right option for your students. So, so I grew up in Westwood, Massachusetts, which is not too far from here. Um, you know, in, in the late 90s when I was attending high school, it was, you know, one of the top high schools in the, the state as, as well as in the country. And at that high school, I was the, you know, senior class president. I took all, you know, honors and AP classes. Uh, I was the captain of the lacrosse team. I played three sports. Um, you know, I'm on like every page of the yearbook because of all the clubs and activities that I did. So. You know, in theory, high school was exactly what it was supposed to be. Um, 
But the truth is, is that I really didn't enjoy high school. Um, I, I looked forward to after school, you know, and, and hanging out with my friends. But the time that I spent, you know, from 7.30 to 2.30 every day really just wasn't very meaningful to me. And I, I you know, I, I, no one ever asked me what I, what I enjoyed doing, you know, and I, I really just had no purpose. And so when it was time to graduate from high school, what did I do? I went to college because that's what I was supposed to do. But I didn't go with any real purpose or any real reason at all. Uh, in fact, I, I chose my college based on two things. Uh, one was that it was far away from where I grew up. And two was that it had nice dorms. So I spent over $100,000 over the four years that I was in college. And as I think you're probably all well aware, it costs far more than that now. Um, and I based it on being far away from my home and a nice place to live. And, and that's not really a good way to choose, you know, uh, a college, right? So, you know, I went to college and again, I, it was fine. I'm good at doing school. So I was able to get, you know, A's and B's there. Um, but again, I never really figured out what it was that I wanted to do. Um, and so after all those years of great education between high school and college, I graduated and, you know, had no real purpose. I, I thought maybe I wanted to be a lawyer, so I studied history, but by the time I got to the end, that was the last thing that I wanted to do. So I kind of just drifted for a couple of years. You know, I had all these different odd jobs. Um, you know, if any of you graduated in the early 2000s, you know, you probably had a business to business sales job. I had a couple of those. I sold art. I sold AT&T. Um, you know, I, I worked as a shipping and receiving clerk. I worked at a deli. You know, I, I was just kind of, you know, floating around. And, you know, then I got like something more akin to a real job. And I, I sold real estate for a while, but I hated it and I was bad at it. And then I decided I needed like a, a paycheck every two weeks. So I was a, uh, what was my position? I was the portfolio administrator at State Street. So I sat in a cubicle and stared at Excel sheets all day. And I, I was actually really good at it. And I was moving up in that company, but um, it just, I, I hated it. And I, I knew that I couldn't do that for my entire life. So I decided I would go back to school and I, I, I got my master's in education. I became a teacher. I taught in the Boston Public Schools for, for a number of years. I went back again and got a master's in um, uh, education leadership, and I was a director of instruction um, at that same Boston Public School. And, and what I really wanted to do was make learning, you know, more relevant, more authentic, um, and you know, I, and that's what I really wanted to do. And I moved on, and I became an assistant principal at Salem High School. And you know, kind of by chance, I found this position here at Minuteman, and I. And I came here and, 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 and I love it here. And it's it, the reason why is really illustrated by this quote that was actually written by one of our current freshmen. Um, and he wrote this. He wrote, my nickname for Minuteman is the place of destiny. The school has earned this title for me because it lays down the foundation that we build upon for the rest of our lives. We chose to be here because we chose to take our life paths into our own hands. Every day that I arrive on this campus, I thank myself for making the right choice. And what really, you know, sticks with me with this quote is that this student who's just starting here is already taking ownership and agency over their future. And I think that's one of the, the beautiful things that we do here at Minutemen is we give students the choice of what they really want to do and to explore and to find that thing that they love to do. And then they take ownership and they, they start figuring out how to get to where they want to be and they develop a path that really makes sense for them. And so I'm going to turn it over now to uh, one of our parents, Courtney, and she's going to talk about, you know, her, her son's journey and, um, you know, their experience here at Minuteman um, and taking ownership over their learning. So, Courtney. All right. You can hear me okay? Great. Um, hi, I'm Courtney. I live in Arlington. I have three sons, the oldest of which is a sophomore at Minuteman in the horticulture shop. Um, my husband and I are both from out of state. I didn't grow up here from California. My husband's from Indiana. Um, we both went to high schools with a very strong focus on high academic achievement. We both went to small liberal arts colleges. Um, if some of Anthony's experiences ring true with me as well. Um, and I would say I had very outdated perceptions of what a technical high school was and uh, who went there. Uh, so I hadn't really given it much thought as my oldest approached the age of uh, going to high school. Um, my son Nathan struggled a lot in middle school um, in sixth and seventh grade. Um, 
didn't feel very good about himself, really struggled to maintain passing grades. Um, and lo and behold, we found out in September of his eighth grade year that he has ADHD. So he was diagnosed very late and a lot of things started to make sense. And so when the tour to Minuteman came up as an opportunity in 2019, uh, before COVID, um, he was like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to Minuteman. I'm just going to go to our town school. I said, well, just, just go and check it out. What could it hurt? He said, you know, you need a break. Take a day off of classes, go do the tour. And he came back from that tour and he's not a talker. He doesn't talk about school. He doesn't talk about much. And he couldn't stop talking about how excited he was about the environmental science program he saw and all the different things, the people he met, the new building. He was so excited. So um, that was really all I needed to know. I did obviously so a little due diligence as a parent doing some research. I uh, found myself very comfortable with that idea. And um, so Nathan applied and was accepted. Um, and then of course, uh, March, 2020 rolled around and um, he stayed home. So he did his diagnostic testing that um, all incoming students to Midman do remotely um, because of COVID over the summer. And lo and behold, this kid tested into all honors classes. And that was the beginning of, for him, uh, realizing that no, you're you're a smart kid. You just learn differently. You need some extra supports, uh, especially around executive functioning. And he loves Minuteman. Um, he loves going there. He will happily get up and leave the house at six forty in the morning to get on the bus. Um, and that's means the world to me. He's found a great group of friends. Even last year, Minuteman did a great job with hybrid, but they weren't in a lot and. He's made some great friends. He loves his teachers. He's being challenged in honors classes and enjoying that. And he's also getting some good support in how to manage his time and materials. So um, I have fallen in love with the school so much that I joined last January, the Minuteman Parent Association as the vice president and helped them with fundraising, um, which is a great organization. If your students end up going there, we'd love to have you. We gave away $16,000 in scholarship to graduating seniors last year, which was really awesome. Um, and I'm, I'm at picking up my soup group order every single week on Thursdays through culinary. Um, I was at the plant sale almost every week in the horticulture department last spring just to get into the greenhouse. So um, I love the school. So I'm happy to answer any questions anybody had. I think that's, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Audrey hit the mute. Thank you, Courtney, I appreciate it. Um, and the Minuteman Parent Association is super involved and, and, and we always see you know, Courtney up here, whether it's in the restaurant or, or one of the places that she mentioned there. Um, and, it's, and it's great, parents are often, I mean, when the freshmen are in exploratory and they are in culinary, you see parents coming into the restaurant constantly, it's amazing. Um, and we'll do, we'll, we'll have time for questions and answers at the end. There is a space at the bottom um, where it says Q and A. So feel free to type those in at any time as we go along here. And just, uh, just so people know, we are we do record this so that you know if, if someone in your household is missing it this evening, we'll post it on the uh, admissions page so that they can check it out at their own time. Or if you come in late, don't worry about it; it'll it'll all be posted there. Um, so, Mr. O'Connors, if you could just put um, the PowerPoint back up for me. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about you. We talked about myself and, and, and Courtney shared a little bit about herself and her experience, but, you know, I know that, you know, what you all want, um, what you're all looking for um, in, uh, you know, high school is you want, you know, um, you want to, you, you want your kid to be ready for college and career. Um, you know, you want them to have caring and competent teachers at their school. Um, I, I hope and I think most of us could agree that you want kids to be excited about and, and enjoy going to school. Um, and I know, I know it sometimes is inappropriate or rude, and I don't want to make any assumptions about people's age, but I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and assume that everyone that's on this, this call right now, unless one of your students is on with you, that you, you probably weren't born this century. All right. And that's like a kind of a wild thing to think about. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is like a wild thing to think about. So, you know, the world our kids are growing up in is a lot different than the one that we were born into. So as we're talking this evening, if what you're remembering about vocational education is from that time period from last century when y'all were growing up, 
then you really need to shift your mindset because the career and technical education high school that we are now is a 21st century high school. It's a whole new ball game. So you, you, we need to kind of shift our, our ideas about what we think about um, vocational education to the present day. And really just to kind of start with that and, and to kind of shift your focus. And you heard, you know, Courtney talking about some of Nathan's experiences here um, is, is this, right? So we have been recognized for our academic programs in 2018. We won a blue ribbon award for academics. Uh, that's a recognition from the federal government. We are one of two high schools in Massachusetts who received that recognition in 2018. Um, and so, you know, what this award is, is that students come to us at all different levels. We have like students who come in who have been really successful in the traditional model. We have students who come in who have really struggled in the traditional model and everyone in between. And what we do for all those students is wherever they come into us, we help them grow and they leave to us at a much higher level. And now, if you ask someone in the 70s, 80s, 90s, if, if that's what, if they would associate a vocational high school with, you know, high academic recognition, they'd probably tell you that they were crazy. Um, and in addition to that, and they would be wrong for your for the record, but they would they wouldn't necessarily associate with that. Kara will tell you she was here in the I don't I'm not going to tell what decade it was, but uh, <laughs> she was here. She knows that that wasn't true then, and it's definitely not true now. Um, and you know, just recently last year, we won a, a recognition from the Mass Reading Association um, for an exemplary reading program, um, and we are the first high school to ever receive that award. And this is really a reflection of our thoughtful approach. Um, that we take to growing our students and, and the lifelong learners that we have here with us. So, you know, to kind of look at our educational model, we talk about education with a purpose, all right? And we use this tree as a metaphor for, um, you know, what our educational model is. And, and then the metaphor, the tree is your life, it's your career, it's your future. Um, and in order to have a healthy tree, you need to have strong roots, all right? And so the first thing with the roots is down there and it's passion, right? So at Minuteman High School, you're gonna go through an exploratory program where you can find out what you love to do and what you do well, all right? And no other high school is gonna, in this area is gonna give you that opportunity. So to have that knowledge about yourself when you're in high school is gonna set you apart from all of your peers. So that's the first thing. And we'll talk more about the exploratory model later in this presentation. The next thing you have down here is experiences, all right? This is all the hands-on learning that you get in your career and technical education major. This looks like, you know, field trips, community service, project-based learning, paid internships, um, you know, really all this, like really, I mean, what the students are doing here this evening is, is representative of what they uh, do in school every day, which is, you know, real world learning. And, um, and in this case, in like things like film and, and, and production. Uh, and these are things that you're not going to get out of a book. You have to actually, you know, go out there and learn about it. So if we kind of look at this little thing from Phi Delta Kappa, which is an organization that's been studying education for a century, um, they found that 86% of, say, high schools should offer certificate or licensure programs, that 82% say they should help develop interpersonal skills, and 82% say they should offer job or career skills training. And this is exactly what we do here at Minuteman, and unfortunately in many um, high schools, is, is, it's, not, it's not something that happens. All right, so that's, that's the experiences. And that's all the fun, cool, interesting stuff that's really different than any other high school. But we also take our academic program really seriously, right? We know that our, our, our sending towns are, are you know, they, we, they want the MCAS pass, they want AP classes and dual enrollment classes. And, and what we're gonna do for you is we're gonna give you the most robust challenge you can handle and we're gonna support you to meet that challenge. Now. I know what you're saying to yourself right now. You just heard me say vocational education, AP, and dual enrollment courses. So dual enrollment are college courses that are taught here at Minuteman. And, and you know, I, you're, again, if you're in that old mindset, you're thinking, I thought these were for schools for people who don't have college ambitions, all right? Well, let's just take a look at this for a minute. And it's a little, whoops, sorry. Um, where are we at here? My apologies. Um, Sorry, there we go. So if we look at this, just to kind of illustrate things. So on the left over here is a car key from a truck that I used to own, right? It's steady and reliable. And, you know, I love that truck. But, you know, a few years back, my wife and I, we go on this vacation, we get this rental car, and it's one of these, you know, mini poopers. And if you just look at these two keys, you can just see how much has changed, right? If you look at that key on the right, there's nothing mechanical about it. Like you can't put it into an ignition, okay? Um, but you know, you go, you walk up to the car, and the the car is on, the door is unlocked, the the radio is on the station that you love, um, and it's just it's crazy. And quite frankly, it, it's changed so much that that key on the right is just normal. 
right? Like, you know, not that long ago, the key on the left is what everyone had. And now the key on the right is what everyone is used to. And so what I want to think about is like how much cars have changed and how much you need to know about telecommunications and entertainment systems and the computers that are inside of them, in addition to all the mechanical parts that are inside. Okay. So what we're doing is what we're preparing students for, and I don't care what field you're in, there is no field that has stood still in time. Okay. Everything has changed. And the reason we offer all these challenging courses and expect so much for kids is that we're preparing them for the 21st century workforce. And if you want to compete and you want to have, if you want to compete in that workforce, you need to have knowledge and skills and you need to be ready for lifelong learning. And that's what we're doing with our academic model. And that's why we have those classes. And then the final thing we have here are professional skills. Okay. Some people call these soft skills and, and some would actually argue that these are the most important skills that anyone brings with them to the workforce. And when you work in a real world environment, you really get the opportunity to develop these things. So, you know, things like um, giving and receiving feedback, you know, how do I work as part of a team? How do I get a job? Right. Do I even know how to do that? And just, you know, kind of to illustrate this is we had some folks from the Harvard Graduate School of Education visiting our school a few years ago. And they're here during our senior project presentations, which is this really unique thing that our seniors do, the project they work on for the whole year. And so the kids there. And he's, you know, he's, they, we sit in on this presentation and the kids talking about what he did. It was a real stretch for this, this, this young person. They, they had to teach themselves how to use some animation software. And quite frankly, the whole presentation was about how he, he messed it up and he couldn't get it to work. All right. And that was the presentation. He's showing the whole thing and he's talking about, you know, what didn't work, what he would do differently, you know, if he were to do it again. And so, you know, the principal walks out of the room with this group of, you know, Harvard Graduate School of Education educators and, and students. And the woman who was kind of leading that group walks out with this group and huddles them up, you know, and she's like, she's like, did you see that? That kid, that kid just showed that it's okay to try and fail. And he was showing metacognition by being able to think about it. And he felt safe in that environment to be able to do that. And she turns to the, to the principal and says, you are running one heck of a school here. Right. So that's what kids who come to Minuteman are able to do. And so over time, you're growing and you're growing, and you're growing. And, you know, when most kids graduate from a high school, they get one thing. They get a diploma. OK, when you graduate from Minuteman, you get a diploma and you can get industry recognized credentials, certifications, licenses. You can do internships. You can do co-ops. So when you leave high school, you're at a different level. All right. And depending on what program you are in, it's going to unlock a certain type of career right out of high school. All right. So if I'm in health assisting, I can go out and be a, a CNA, a phlebotomist, uh, an EMT right out of high school because of what we do here. Now, maybe that's not what you're looking for, right? Maybe you want to be a paramedic or a radiology technician, and that's going to take more education. It could be two plus years. It could be a certification program, whatever the case may be. And then maybe that's not what you want to do. Maybe you want to be a doctor. You want to be an RN. You want to be a, a physician's assistant. And that's obviously going to take four plus years of education in order to get that. So, so what we're doing here is we're relating the things you love to some level of education so that you can understand the hundreds of job opportunities and careers that are out there for you. And this is education with a purpose. So for all the students who went, school, school, went through school like I did, with no purpose, Minuteman students do not leave here without a purpose. And I'm gonna turn it over to Kara. Um, and Kara is gonna talk about her experience and, and her, her daughter's experience here at Minuteman. So um, Mr. O'Connor, if you could pull the PowerPoint down, mute me and um, Kara, go ahead. Great. So I am Kara Dalton. I currently live in Arlington as well. I grew up in Waltham, however. Um, which is not ascending town. When and a little bit about me, when I grew, when I was um, a junior in high school, uh, at a traditional high school, I I was feeling bored. I wanted more hands-on work to do. I knew I wanted to be a nurse, so I um, asked. You know, I petitioned my school committee. I had to work really hard to get into to Minuteman. They accepted me at Minuteman, and this whole new world opened up for me. Um, I left, you know, honors and AP classes at my sending high school. I joined honors and AP classes at Minuteman. And not only that, but I, I worked harder in my academics when I had this other week of exciting hands-on work 
when I, you know, as a junior in high school, I had a license with the state of Massachusetts as a nursing assistant, and I got to work in a nursing home, which is one of my favorite populations. Um, and it, it just opened all whole new worlds for me. Um, I graduated with a diploma and I went on to nursing school. I've been a registered nurse for 22 years. Um, I've, you know, been to more college. I'm a nationally certified school nurse now. So it, I moved along the college track clearly, um, but I would not have been able to do that. I don't think as, as, as quickly and efficiently if I hadn't had the hands-on learning. Fast forward to my daughter, um, Alice is a junior. She was encouraged by me because I had such an, a, an amazing opportunity and I really, really thrived and excelled in, in high school at Minuteman with the hands-on learning that I had. And um, she wasn't super interested in looking at Minuteman and knowing that she's a very similar learner to myself and that I think she would really benefit from a hands-on project-based learning. Um, I made her go on the tour and she came back super excited and ready to apply. So um, she thought she was coming in to be a nurse. She thought she wanted to be a nurse and absolutely fell in love with the trades once she went through all the things she wanted to try. And she has ultimately settled on electrical wiring and would, is looking forward to trying to get into a union apprenticeship and would like to be a master electrician. So while that wasn't necessarily what she had thought she was going to do, she has found her niche and she absolutely loves it. She's excelling uh, academically. She's excelling and absolutely loves her program. She loves her teachers, her group. She's in athletics. She's in student government. She just has opened up all kinds of new things for herself, being as excited as she is to go to school. And I, and I could say, as with Courtney too, she's very willing to get up and get out the door to school very early in the morning. Be back up, Mr. O'Connors. Thank you, Kara. That was fantastic. Um, and you know, Kara, whoops. Mr. O'Connor, should I get the power? There we go. Um, can you put the PowerPoint back up for me? Sorry, talking to the control room here. There we go. So Kara just talked a little bit about, um, you know, how, uh, how Alice came in and thought she knew what she wanted and then went through exploratory and then found, you know, the thing that she truly wa wanted, right? So let me just kind of walk you through how, what that process looks like, okay? So we call it exploratory. And so what you do is, you know, you're going on an every other week format of uh, a, what I would refer to as core traditional academics and then career and technical education. So you're rotating weeks. And so in your first career and technical education week, you get to visit all 19. So we have 19 career and technical education career majors. And I'll, I'll talk about what those are in a minute. And then after that week, so you visit them all for a relatively short amount of time just to make sure you understand what they are, okay? So just sometimes based on the name alone, you're not exactly sure what it is. Um, and then after that week, you're gonna choose six to explore in depth. And then you're gonna spend one week in either your fifth or your sixth choice. And you're gonna spend two weeks in your top four choices, okay? So this takes like almost half of your freshman year, um, about 18 weeks. And at the time, at the end of that time, you then declare your top three choices and you know, in most cases get your number one choice. So that's how exploratory works. Now, what are some of those career and technical education majors? We really have something for everyone, all right? So if you have a student who's really interested in art, um, we have design and visual communications. If you have the next like, you know, uh, coder, computer engineer, data security expert. We have programming and web development. I'm currently in multimedia engineering, which is for students who are interested in things, all things film. So from screenwriting to post-production editing and everything in between, um, sound engineering um, and technical theater production. So learning how to do like lighting and rigging and really putting on a live event. So that's, you know, part of what they're experiencing here as well. Then we have, um, you know, the engineering and production pathway. So if you want to do engineering or robotics in automation, that's actually a separate program. Um, that's the design side of engineering. And then on the production side of engineering, you have something called advanced manufacturing, which is like learning how to 
operate CNC mill and lathe machines primarily, but you also do computer coding and 3D modeling in that program as well. And then you have metal fabrication and welding. Then we have you know, what you would refer to as the traditional trades. Um, so things like automotive technology, carpentry and construction, uh, electrical wiring, which um, Alice is in, uh, plumbing, excuse me. Then we have, you know, for the folks out there who really like helping people, making people happy, we have things like cosmetology, culinary arts and baking, early education and teaching and health assisting, which is what Kara uh, did when she was here. I don't know if it was called health assisting, but the, the same program there. Um, and then we have, you know, some other STEM programs. So we have biotechnology, if you really like lab sciences, environmental science, horticulture and plant science, and you got to come down here, Nathan, uh, Courtney's son is in this right now. Um, the greenhouse is ridiculously, it's amazing. Um, and then we just added our 19th program this year, which is animal science. So for all those future vets, vet techs, and there's so many careers in the, in the veterinary field. I actually had no idea until I came here and had a chance to meet some people. So those are the different careers that, that students can explore. Um, and so what are, you know, what are the exploratory benefits, all right? The first thing is, is coming in and figuring out what do you do well and what do you love to do? Okay, now the thing that's interesting is I don't, you know, a lot of kids are, they only know what they know, right? Which means that they don't know what they don't know. Just like, you know, um, Kara was explaining in, in, in terms of what Alice thought she wanted to do and then what she ended up doing. Like she probably had never really, I mean, she knew what electricians did, but she probably didn't know that she liked to do it. Um, so that's like a fantastic opportunity. So a lot of people say like, you'll figure it out when you grow up. Why wait? Why not start figuring it out now, right? It doesn't mean that you have your whole life figured out when you're in high school, but to start, you know, really getting a sense of the things that you might like to do now, there's no need to wait. Um, the other thing is developing informed no's, right? So, you know, I interview kids all the time and they come in and they're going to be the next top chef. They want to do culinary. They, you know, they love cooking with their family. And then they come in and they do exploratory. They do a week in culinary and they're working in the district restaurant and they're like, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I want to do this. Like, you know, I mean, I love cooking at home for my parents, but you know, the pace here is super fast and you know, my parents will choke down pretty much anything that I make, but you know, customers are sending my food back saying it's too salty. Um, it's just too much pressure. You know, I love cooking, but I don't want to make a career out of it. Right. And then they go into biotech and they fall in love with it. And that's what they do here. So these are great lessons for students to learn, you know, early on, it's going to save them time. So if they went to a traditional high school and thought they were going to go to, you know, study engineering. And then once they got there, they realized they didn't like it. I mean, engineering is a, you know, those schools cost a lot of money and you want to know if that's really what you want to do before you get there. Um, so it's a, it, it's a fantastic opportunity. And then the last thing here is kind of embracing new types of diversity, meaning like understanding what different people do. And so, you know, before you would say like, I would never do X, like give it a shot, right? Try it out. And at the end of the day, it might not be for you, um, but you can learn an important lesson and that's to value the skills and the knowledge of people who do something different than you, right? So you learn how complex it is being an electrician or, you know, the level of knowledge a cosmetologist has about chemistry, right? So it really helps create an environment here at Minuteman where students genuinely respect and celebrate each other for their accomplishments. All right. So it's, it's really unique to at this age, really learn what other people do and appreciate um, all the skills and knowledge that they possess. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Srividya. So Mr. O'Connors, if you can pull the PowerPoint down and um, mute me in Srividya. Um, I hope you guys can hear me. Um, hi, everyone. I am Srividya. And I'm excited to be a part of uh, this panel of parent presentation for this, um, you know, information night about um, Minuteman High School. Um, you know, we live in the town of Acton and our older son is a senior this year, majoring in the career technical shop of engineering technology. And as I, you know, tonight, as I'm part of this presentation, I actually look back to a day a couple of years ago when he was a student in junior high and he came back home very excited and really like with a lot of information that he was like like bursting to share with us and what it was was about a group of students who had come from um, a local high school and talked to them about um, their way of studying what they do and also shared you know some of the projects they had done 
and all this. And when I'm, you know, when we were watching our son who gave us all this information, it actually made us sit up. And at that time we decided that um, we would have to give, you know, a lot of thought and consideration and pick the right high school for our son to go to. And after that, I looked at a lot of local high schools nearby in the area, one of them being Minuteman Technical High School. I went and read a lot of the information that was there on their website, attended a lot of events like this where uh, parents spoke, students gave information. And after doing and being a part of all this, uh, we kind of thought that this would be the right school for a son to go for his high school. Fast forward today, um, I cannot believe it, but the dream has actually become a reality where when in a couple of months he graduates, he will not only have a high school diploma, but in addition to that, he'll have a whole, rec a whole set of skills that are actually a good fit to his interests, ability, and aptitude. Along with that, um, he had a lot of different kind of learning experiences and he got to meet a diverse student population. And this journey has been amazing for him. So I, I, so I'm thinking that I'm, I, what I want to say is, you know, I'm requesting all families who have children who are, you know, in that journey of picking a suitable high school for them to consider Middleman as a possible school and also become maybe a member of this wonderful community. Thank you. Trivedia. All right. So I love it. It's so great. Um, I've heard these stories. I had a chance to talk with all of our parents beforehand, and I just uh, it just always makes me so excited to hear, um, you know, from the families and, and how um, happy and appreciative they are of the opportunities that their students have had here at Minuteman. So uh, every time I hear it, it makes me happy. So um, the next thing, and Mr. O'Connor, you can pop the uh, PowerPoint back up for me. Thank you. Um, next thing we're going to talk a little bit about is our academy model. So, you know, one of the things that we are developing, and it's, it's, a, it's something that continues to develop, so it's not like a finished product, and really the building was built designed around this academy model, okay? So that, that means a couple of things that you would see right away. So if you come into the school, you'll see, for the most part, on the first floors um, are the career and technical education programs, but right above them are uh, the academic programs, and, that, and that's actually really intentional to be built like that. And then the programs within the school are kind of aligned uh, based on academies and then pathways. So we have two academies, so the Engineering, Construction, and Trades Academy, and then the Life Science and Services Academy. And, and within each of these academies, we've grouped these um, programs that have like similar, like some commonalities and overlap within them. All right. So, um, you know, for example, in the design arts, the, excuse me, the design and design, the design pathway, you have this program that I'm in right now, multimedia engineering, design and visual communications and programming and web development. So, you know, this is the entertainment industry. It's theater, radio, television, graphic arts, advertising, marketing, and programming. It's kind of like the backbone, the, the kind of behind all of these things. And so one of the trademarks of this integration um, it, it's interdisciplinary work, right? So you're going to see these different programs working together. However, what you don't see, and it's partially just because it's hard to illustrate on a chart, but what you don't see is that it's not just these, these three, pro, three or four programs in the same pathway. It's an English teacher, a math teacher, a science teacher, and a history teacher along with it. So people are always asking us, I get this question all the time, like, you know, how do you do so well on, you know, the MCAS or like, you know, what, how is your academic program so long if you're doing less academics? But in reality, we're never not doing academics. We're just always applying it. So what happens when you ask people to integrate in five commonalities amongst their curriculum is you get things like this. So this was an integration project from last year. Um, and this was like around World B Day. All right. So, you know, in your history classes or English classes, you're learning about it, you know, doing research, you're, you're writing, you know, in your science class, you're doing work around it. And, you know, you have in health assisting, they're working on like allergies and, you know, how to administer EpiPens and horticulture. We've raised bees here. So in horticulture, they're, you know, uh, raising bees and, and harvesting honey. Um, they're working with the culinary arts department to harvest that honey and then use it to make, um, you know, food with um, carpentry is making beehives. That's what they're doing in that picture up there. Um, you have biotechnology working on like uh, bee 
sells and how that kind of impacts their industry. You have early ed working with the littles in the uh, uh, daycare center, <clears throat> um, learning about bees. And, you know, really we had all, I think we had almost all 19 or 18 at the time of our career and technical education programs working on this. And that's just like a big example of it, but there's all these little ones that happen all the time. So, you know, in engineering, they learn about gear ratios and they go over to automotive technology and they go see what those gear ratios look like gears look like in real life. And then the automotive students learn about gear ratios, right? So there's this kind of, you know, interdisciplinary nature between those. Miss Marshall um, and her family, they raise uh, this like large bunny type thing. They, they're part of like the 4-H club up where they live. And she brought the bunnies in and kind of worked with health assisting about how they use this therapy animals and early ed, they got to, you know, the kids got to learn about the rabbits. Um, uh, our physics teacher, Mr. Marshall, uh, he'll like 3D print cars and they'll learn about drag and they'll do it on different types of vehicles, right? So you're always going to see, you know, teachers integrating both, you know, between the career and technical education majors, as well as between academics and career and technical education. Now, this is really important. Our whole model is really important. We're going to do a quick little science lesson here, okay? So when you're learning in a kind of traditional classroom, you're, you're processing information and it more or less goes like this, all right? So the first thing is the information comes in and it hits your frontal lobe. And this is where you, you know, where you think, right? What words mean. Um, then you have your temporal lobe. So you have like, you know, I hear them. Uh, and then your occipital lobe is what you're seeing. So you're seeing, you're listening, and you're thinking. And when you're in class, you're basically, you know, using this highway. Now, when you're at Miniman, all right, now you're more fully engaged, right? So you're actually doing the things that you're learning about, <coughs> excuse me. And now by doing that, you're actually activating your parietal lobe. So you're literally using more of your brain when you're learning, uh, you know, in, in, when you're actually doing what you're learning. And when this happens, kids start making more connections, the information sticks. Um, and it, it's, it's more than just absorbing information like you typically would do and, and when you kind of sit and receive information in a traditional setting. Um, so this is the difference between like, you know, reading about and testing the salinity of water. You might do that like in a lab and, you know, a science class one day versus, you know, our kids who can really like recite it, you know, they know all the tricks about how it works um, and all the rest because they're actively using more parts of their brain. So this is like elaborative practice. All right. And it also is increased memory. And I just have this, it's, there's a lot of different things around like cognitive rigor um, and depths of knowledge, but I thought that this picture really illustrated kind of the idea of like retaining information, right? So many of us went through school and, and we forgot most of it when we left, right? Because we never did anything with it. And this just kind of talks about that when you, when you do the real thing, you're going to retain much more of the information than if you just read about it or if you just hear someone else talk about it. So this is really what we do at Minuteman. The other kind of thing with our academy model is that when you, if you read the literature about academy models and when you create these webs of academic teachers, CTE teachers, students, uh, business partners, parents, counselors, what it tells you is that you're going to get better attendance, you're going to get uh, better grades, you're going to get better job placements, better graduation rates. And, you know, honestly, none of those things have ever really been an issue for Minuteman, but we always want to be better. We always want to see how we can go from good to great. We always want to see how we can give our students um, an even better opportunity. So that's really what the academy model is. And it's really the foundation of what we're doing here at Minuteman. And it continues to evolve um, over time. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Radhika um, and Mr. O'Connor. if you can pull the, um, there we go. Perfect. Great. Thanks. Um, so I can share why our daughter uh, wanted to come to Minutemen, why we picked Minutemen. Um, so, you know, when uh, our daughter was in middle school, we were looking at schools um, and we were mostly considering public school. But, you know, at the time, what I realized was Minutemen was kind of the best kept secret. You know, most people didn't know about Minutemen. None of our neighbors were going to Minutemen. And when we said, oh, this is one option we were considering for high school, they're like, oh. Um, how come a vocational school, right? Um, and I look at the same reaction, it's such a different reaction now, like we were just at the pediatrician's office for a physical and the doctor said, oh, so where, does you, where do you go to school? And uh, our daughter replies, oh, uh, at Minuteman. She says, oh, I've, I've heard it's a really good school. So the perception, you know, even in the last few years has really changed um, about Minutemen. I can answer kind of, you know, even when, 
uh, it was the best kept secret why we picked Minutemen. Um, and the answer for us was that, you know, we, um, so our daughter is a high performing student in the traditional sense. And, uh, you know, like I know that the typical model would be, you know, you go to high school, you overload yourself with a ton of AP classes and you push, push, push academically and you try to get into this top school. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, I was talking to a professor at MIT who was saying to us, you know, I've never seen kids coming to MIT who've been as academically prepared, I mean, more than ever before, and yet with such little emotional resilience. Uh, and, and that's the thing that we didn't want for our daughter, uh, that academic performance alone wasn't enough for us. Like our goal is not to just overload completely with AP classes, but miss out on that uh, emotional resilience part. And we really wanted her to have an education where she was getting, you know, real life world experience and understanding what working is like, not just this academic overload. Um, and in saying all of this, I don't want it to seem like we don't care about academics, um, just to, you know, put it out there, like, you know, she was coming into Minutemen and Minutemen accommodated her wherever she was, like we had been homeschooling, um, because we were living in Singapore at the time. Um, and uh, when our daughter came into Minutemen, you know, uh, in as a freshman, she was doing pre calculus, this year, she is doing AP calculus. Um, so this is not to say academics is not important, but at the same time, what she absolutely loves about Minutemen is the balance where, you know, half the time it's academics and the other half of the time um, they're doing just fun filled passion projects where they're learning a lot, but every day is such a joy to go. Um, and I'll, I'll share maybe that, uh, you know, she had to have oral surgery recently. And when I had scheduled um, that, that um, oral surgery for uh, the week when she had shop week, uh, and she studies design and visual communications, you know, she was very upset. I actually had to call and reschedule it because that could not happen on a shop week, apparently. So this is the kind of passion that they have um, for what they're doing. Uh, and what's been really amazing for me to watch is, you know, she's really found her kind of people um, at Minutemen, uh, you know, so it's been this amazing combination of having the academics, but then also this incredible level of creativity and this happiness that I see. And I also watch her, you know, she at the beginning of the year would have to get up at like 5.15 in the morning to get to school on time. Um, fortunately, now it's a little later, the wake up time, it's like six o'clock, but it's she was willing to do that, like, because she was really happy to go to school. And, you know, that is just wonderful to see as a parent. Um, so yeah, for us, it's been this um, just really po wonderfully positive experience of the combination of, you know, both the academics and Minutemen being accommodating with that. Um, plus the real life, you know, work experience, the creativity, the passion and the right social circle and just finding her people, um, it's really been truly a joy. Um, and maybe I'll just share one example of this practical work experience, uh, and I promise I'll be done. <laughs> uh, the one example of uh, the practical work experience was, um, you know, there was the Skills USA competition that she entered that was an opportunity at Minuteman where, you know, as a student, you had to prepare a design and then present that design to a panel of judges who would then ask you questions to justify why you created this design and your design choices. And you have to justify your, your, your design and present this, right? And this is something that I observe at work that a designer has to do all the time. You're asked questions about, well, why did you make this design choice? Why is this blue instead of, you know, why didn't you pick green, for example? And, you know, being able to present the this at the age of 14 uh, in front of a panel of judges, that, that I thought was just a wonderful opportunity. So I'll pause there. That those were our main reasons for going to Minutemen and we've been very, very happy. Thank you so much, Radhika. I really appreciate it. That's some amazing stuff there. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, just, I love hearing from all the families. It's a, they just all have such, such amazing stories. Um, and you know, a lot of you all, I know you're you're looking at college as you know the the post high school choice, and that's great, right? 
And when you're applying to college, here's what everyone's trying to do. It's actually really simple. Everyone's trying to stand out from everybody else. The thing that's kind of strange is that most people try to stand out from others by just doing more of the same thing, right? So I'm going to take more AP classes. I'm going to do more clubs, more sports, more activities. And, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. That's exactly what I did. And it will get you a good application to go to college. But I'm going to kind of give you a different example of how you can kind of stand out from others. Okay, so uh, let's just do a little hypothetical. So I'm going to be an admissions counselor at a college and I'm looking at applications for my environmental science program, right? I'm looking at the applications that are coming in. All right, great. AP classes. Fantastic. Played a sport. All right, great. Then I get this kid from Minuteman who's in the environmental science program. And I look down and I see that this student has an OSHA 40 hazardous waste operators license. Now, I don't see that very much, do I? I mean, if you don't know what that is, so just so I, I'll explain what that is. So an OSHA 40 hazardous waste operator's license means that you are qualified to both clean up hazardous waste spills as well as lead the teams who clean up hazardous waste spills. So most 18 year olds aren't gonna have that. In fact, most of the professors in my environmental science program aren't gonna have that. So not when I see this kid, this is a kid who's not just interested in environmental science, right? This is a kid who's living it. This is a kid who's going to bring expertise to my school. This is the kid I want in my environmental science program. You look at all of our member communities, our nine member communities and all of our eighth grade classes, it's about 3000 students, right? Now in your career major, there's usually not more than 15 students for your grade level, all right? So that means that only 15 students in environmental science in the current eighth grade class even have the chance to get that certification. And that's less than 1%. Anytime you have something that's less than 1%, and it's awesome, it is the definition of a competitive advantage. And every single student who comes to Minuteman has the opportunity to gain that competitive advantage over their peers. And they get to do it in an environment that they love. So we spend a ton of time talking about how we're different than other high schools, but we wanna make sure that people understand that coming to Minuteman is the complete high school experience. So you know, we have athletics, all right? So we have 14 varsity sports. Um, you can see them listed here. They're listed on our website as well. And I wanna show this, cause this is pretty cool. Um, so we just opened up our new athletic fields. Well, there's still, two of them are still being completed, but we just opened up our football field on October 23rd. We had our homecoming, which was followed by, you know, so we had a soccer game of, of uh, girls and boys soccer and a, a football game followed by a homecoming dance, which was, you know, I think the students were super excited to be part of. Um, we're still, our baseball field is um, the next one to be completed and then the softball field. So come the time your students are coming here, those fields will be complete. They'll be done by for the spring season. So we are very excited about that. That was our first home game in five years that we had on October 23rd. So um, it was awesome. The community came out. It was, it was a really fun day. Um, we have a lot of different clubs and activities. This is not an exhaustive list, but this is a number of them. Actually, the students in here have the Minuteman Film Festival, which is, I think, the first one of those um, on Saturday. So I know they're all excited to showcase their films at that. Um, you know, we have uh, a first robotics club, which we just started last year, which people are really excited about. Music club, math team. Um, we have a game club that kids really like, a GSA Plus, which is really popular. Um, so, you know, a lot of different clubs and activities. And then we have Skills USA, which is something that's completely different. And um, Radhika talked about that in, in, in her daughter's experience in, in that program. Um, and really what that is, is the chance to compete um, in your, your skills or your knowledge. And so we start at the school level, it goes to regionals, then states, and then we actually, there are actually national competitions. And Minuteman in the last 10 years has, excuse me, in the last 10 years has won 20 gold medals nationally. So when we show, and that's the most of any school of our size in the country, all right? So uh, when we show up at Skills USA, like we're, people know who we are, we're elite, all right? So like, you know, the, Aria had her experience with the, the, the design contest. Um, you know, we have students who have got national mentors and things like engineering math or job interviewing skills and environmental science. Um, we had a student get a silver in programming. And what he had to do was they said, all right, so you have to build a website and it has to do the following things. And they list the things off. And then they say, all right. And, you know, wildcard, it also has to be accessible to students who have Down syndrome. So go. And then they have a certain amount of time to do it. So it's just really unique, interesting club that, again, you can really set yourself apart in. 
and if you're in, sorry, I just note, if you're in a traditional trade and you win some of those competitions, there are major companies willing to hire you on the spot. Um, and they give out like that tens of thousands of dollars of equipment um, at those competitions as well. Um, we have a drama club. So we're in the school's theater right now. We'll hopefully, well, we will have our first production in this theater in the spring. Unfortunately, COVID cut off our original first one. And then last year, you know, like many of you, we weren't able to have that. Um, this is the theater right here when it'll be set up for uh, an actual production. Production. Um, and then, you know, we do community service here as well. Whoops, we do community service here as well. We've been on service learning trips down in like New Orleans and Puerto Rico that we haven't been able to do that recently because of COVID um, and a lot of more local things um, as well. And so, you know, now you're thinking to yourself, wow, this sounds amazing. How do I apply? All right, so the first thing you do is you go to minuteman.org. Anywhere on that website, you're gonna find a button that says apply now, or you can go to the minuteman.org backslash admissions page and that'll give you more information there. But what do we look at? So we look at um, the first marking term of this year, whatever that is for your school. It could be a quarter, it could be a trimester. Um, usually it's one of those two. Uh, so we look at that first marking term in your seventh grade grades, attendance and conduct. Uh, we have a recommendation form, which is a checkbox that can be filled out. It can be by a guidance counselor, a teacher, uh, a coach, um, just someone who's not related to the student. And then we do an interview and the interview is with me. I'm going to give you all the questions ahead of time. And you really can only do good or excellent. Those are your two options. All right. And it's really just questions about why you're interested in the school, what you, what you might want to do, the kind of things you enjoy. So don't worry, I'll, I'll give all those questions to you. The most important date anyone needs to know is February 15th. And this is for our member town applicants. For non-member town applicants out of district, March 15th is your deadline um, to get all of those things listed up there done. And so what this priority means is that for our member town applicants, if you've applied before February 5th, it's really more, if you apply after February 15th, you have to wait for everyone who's applied before February 15th to be offered admission, okay? so. As long as you've applied, we'll get you through the rest of the process. Even if you apply on February 14th, like you submit that paper or the online application, <clears throat> we'll work with your school and I'll do your interview on Zoom at eight o'clock at night if that's what we have to do. Um, and we'll make sure that you get through that process. So just keep that in your mind. Uh, we'll send out reminders. You'll get postcards about it. We'll tell your school. So, you know, we'll make sure that it happens for you. And then just lastly, uh, you know, some opportunities to come see the school. You can schedule a private tour. Um, at this point in the process, you must have applied. Um, and right now it's for the member town applicants. And this is mainly because I do all the tours and there's only so much time um, that is available because all the students are in school now. So a lot of those evening and weekend tours go pretty fast. You can call Sue in the admissions office um, and click option two and she'll, she'll help you out. We have a monthly newsletter. Mr. O'Brien, our communications director who's here, um, just is sending that out. Just sent it out. Uh, Send that out this week um, and you can go on the website and fill that out. And we have an open house on November 21st from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, you can go on the website and register for it. Uh, if you show up that day, we'll just register when you get here. Um, and you can just drop in between those hours of 10 and 1. You can visit all the programs. You can meet you know, academic teachers, guidance counselors, special education support, really anything. So it, it's an opportunity to really get to learn a lot about the school. And I'm just going to close here before we do questions with this quote from Howard Thurman, who was a civil rights activist who was really influential on, um, you know, folks who are, you know, a little more um, in the history books like Martin Luther King Jr. And he wrote this, he wrote, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that because what the world needs is people who have come alive. And I believe that at Minuteman, we give students the opportunity to find that thing that makes them come alive. And it's really a gift for all of us uh, to be able to do that for young people. So I wanna thank everyone for uh, listening tonight. Um, Mr. O'Brien's been monitoring the Q and A. Um, so Mr. O'Brien, what, what's a question that you have for me? Yeah, so we have um, a lot of great questions. We have 19 questions. Um, I think some of them have probably been answered throughout the uh, presentation. So I'm gonna probably skip over a few that have been answered, um, but I'm gonna go down the line. Uh, one of the first questions is, what type of student um, is Minuteman not right for? Mm. Or is, are there career paths that, that are not right for them uh, in terms of if they were to try to come here? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So is there a student who's not right for Minuteman? 
I don't know. I don't think so. I think what the, I think the question for anyone to ask themselves is like to look into the school. And if you want to be here, then you're the right student. If you, the kid, the student I'm talking about here, if the student doesn't want to be here after they've learned about this, you know, so not like in Kara or Courtney's case where like the student wasn't sure to start and then they came and they were like, wow, this is exactly what I want. That's different. I'm talking about a student who after they've done all those things is like, that's not where I want to go. And the pro the reason I say that that's not the right student is because there's, if you're not going to take advantage of the opportunities and if you don't want to spend the amount of time in a career major um, that you will, which is half of your time, um, that's probably not the right decision for you, the student. Um, that, that would, that's who I would say is the, not the right student. And for different programs, we'll meet a student where they're at. You know, I mean, if you're, we'll meet a student where they're at to make sure that they can access the curriculum um, in any program, if that's kind of where that question is going. But um, yeah, there is no, there, the only wrong student is a student who doesn't want to be here. That's a great question. All right, and the number of questions just jumped from 16 to 29. <laughs> so to uh, we're gonna to do, do our best here, uh, folks. So thanks for bearing with us. Um, the next question is, I'd like to know more about support for students with ADHD and how Minuteman helps with executive function. Yeah, does anyone, um, does any parent have a student who just struggle with executive functioning that the school has been helpful for? I know. <laughs> uh just executive functioning in general if there's anything that's been helpful if not that's okay i know all my all my students are like i can tell you i can tell you um so i would tell you that we have uh a lot of students who um either adhd or executive functioning is a, a struggle um there are a couple of things so depending on what your your student is um like if they have a 504 plan or an IEP as a result of those, um, that diagnosis, um, you would have an academic support class or a student learning center that would help you work, you know, and keep yourself organized on top of your assignments. Um, and then I think one of the benefits of working in a real world environment is that you have to learn to manage your time. So you learn to manage longer term projects, right? Um, and they really build out the, you know, scaffolding for that, you know, checklists, um, you know, breaking it down into more manageable parts, which ultimately when you get to like be a senior, the goal is that you can break those things down into more manageable parts. Like your freshman and sophomore, they're going to help you do it and show you how it's done. But by the time you're, you know, ready to leave us, we want to make sure that you're independent and can do those things on your own. So, um, uh, and a lot of students from, I do the 504 transition meeting. So I, I hear from a lot of parents and um, when a student kind of gets to do the thing that they're really good at and build on their strengths, um, some of those executive functioning things become, um, at least in their program area, less of a challenge for them. That's a great question. Um, a couple quick and easy questions. One is, uh, does Miniman have a music performance program, band course, or orchestra? The answer is yes. We have a band club. We also have a drama club. Um, I, I don't know if there's anything else. Yeah. So we, we have, have we have a music we have music classes as well, right? So during your core academic weeks, we have art and music options as elective classes. Um, so we do guitar, uh, keyboards, chorus what we call instrumental lab so you can continue working you know on your instrument there we have like mr o'brien said we have a, a music club after school and we've done some chorus stuff as well in the past it's been a little while just with um covid um next quick question uh, what languages does the school offer i know spanish and french yeah so it's spanish and french um just to note um, at a vocational school, world language is not a graduation requirement uh, because you're learning a different language in your career and technical education program. You're learning a technical language. However, because the majority of our students are have college aspirations, most colleges are going to be looking for two to three years of a world language. So um, we do Spanish and French in that um, in world language. Um, how do I know if all of our child's paperwork has been received to complete his application? Um, there's also a question about purchasing Minuteman swag, and um, there's actually an online store link on our website, and the MPA, uh, the, the Parent Association, helps us with that, but um, paperwork question paperwork. for you. Yeah, so um, if you go on the application website and you sign into your account, it should tell you what your status is. And so um, if it says awaiting eighth grade records, that just means the first quarter hasn't ended and we haven't gotten it. You'll know we got everything because it'll say awaiting interview. But if I'm being honest with you, Sue and myself, if we don't have everything, we're going to ask you. And we work with the schools in our, our middle schools and our sending communities are fantastic with getting us our records. Sometimes if you go to like a private school, um, 
it's not, it's just that we don't have the same relationship. So it sometimes it takes a little bit longer and we might ask you to help us out with that, but uh, they're usually fantastic. Um, we work with a, a lot of them over the years. Um, but one of two things, just look on, you know, the application website and see what your status is. If it says awaiting records, it means we don't have everything yet. Um, awaiting interview, we don't do the interviews until um, December. So once you see awaiting, uh, most people won't be past awaiting records yet because most people's first quarter maybe just ended. And uh, if you're on a trimester, which a lot of our middle schools are, um, uh, that trimester still is a few weeks away. Uh, I think you answered this, but how much does current grades play a role in the application process? Yeah, great question. So um, we're, our school committee is voting on an updated admissions policy tomorrow night. Um, we, so I, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole until it's fully approved, but our goal, what we've proposed is to, um, it used to be like, you know, an A was worth a point, a B was worth a point, a C, a D, and an F, so on and so forth. We've made it so that A through C is all worth the highest point total, because we know a lot of students work really hard, but don't necessarily get A's and B's, um, and vice versa. Like I was a student who didn't work hard and got A's, and we want to reward both of those students, uh, both either for the high level of achievement or for the hard work, because both of those students are going to be successful here. Um, that's the biggest change with grades. So A through C is all worth the same. Um, and it's sorry, and the grades in general are weighted 20%. So everything is worth the same. So attendance is 20%, conduct, which has also been changed dramatically, where the only conduct that counts against you is um, uh, either being expelled for a period of time or a suspension of 10 or more days. So most students won't have any conduct counted against them. Um, and so every piece is just 20%, interviews 20%, recommendation 20, and then the other three areas are 20%. And just the context of that is that the state law uh, changed. Yes. Yes. State um, law changed. What's the acceptance rate and how competitive is it to get in? Yeah, good question. So last year we had 200 seats um, and we had 260 applicants. The, uh, sorry, we had 200 seats and we had 260 member town applicants. When everything shook out over the time period, all of of the students who wanted to be here from our member towns are here right now. Um, there may be a smaller number of seats, potentially. We haven't officially decided that yet for this upcoming school year, just because we're uh, already over capacity and we don't want to go too far past that. Um, but we also, um, I mean, I don't know how many kids will apply, right? So I'm guessing it'll be similar. So, you know, hopefully everyone who wants to be here ends up being here. It's, but it's, you know, do your best, I would say. That's what I tell every kid. Like, do the things that you can control, right? Um, you know, just do your best. That's that's what I would do for everyone who's interested in the school. And come visit. Show us that you really want to be here as well. Um, every parent is mentioning how early students need to get up to go to school. Um, and by the way, this is a few different questions, so maybe we could combine this answer, but um, maybe just give an overview on why um, I think it really depends on town by town where you're coming from yeah. uh, for the bus schedule. Yeah. So and, school, and, and sorry, one last part yeah. is if we had considered joining other local high schools and making the start time later. Yeah, so it's a good question. So uh, right now our school day is 7.40 to 2.30. Um, we have towns as far away as Lancaster, which is, you know, even if you weren't on a bus would take you, you know, 45 minutes or so because um, I've gone up there and had a chance to present at the schools. Um, what I would recommend you do, because I, I couldn't tell you how long it is for every individual student, is if you go on the school website, the bus routes are posted. So it would give you an idea of when the bus is going to pick you up. And, and what I would tell you, and this is what students have told me, so this isn't just how I personally feel about it is uh, the students feel like it's worth it to them. Um, the ride is worth it to them. Um, some of them talk about how they sleep on the way in, they do their homework on the way home or vice versa or whatever, you know, and, you know, and maybe they're on their phones, like, you know, every kid is these days uh, when they're on the bus, but um, they make the use of the time. And, you know, based on the fact that we have so many kids who um, quite frankly, live pretty far away, come here every year. Uh, it just tells me that they 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 see the value and it's worth the trip for them. But if you want to get some specifics on that, the the bus routes are posted on the school website. Shrividia wants if you. Shrividia, go ahead. Uh, just a quick thing I would like to say about you know the travel thing and from all the four you know all the years that our son has done this travel, all I can say is you know as parents we always look at our children as very very little, right? But when they start that high school, 
it's almost like very soon they will have to become a little more like seriousness is coming. It's just at the door. So I think this whole travel, you know, so-called a little bit challenges there is actually a good way to prepare them under your guidance and support. And, and it's, it's really very, very helpful as, as and when they step out of the door and they move on into whatever part of life they want to move to, whether it's a college student or whether it's a working professional or whether it's, you know, any other thing, their own, you know, uh, working in their own business, who knows. But this, this, this little thing challenge actually prepares them very, very well. So, um, you know, it is, it is a challenge, but parental support, parental understanding, and whatever, you know, tips you have, um, it, it helps everything put together. It, it just prepares your child for a later on life. Transition is very easy, and they are that much prepared to handle it when they move on, um, and, and I can say that, I, and I see it, and my son, you know, he tells me again and again. So as Mr. Anthony said, a lot of children have learned how to deal with it. They do take a nap, they do. So I know my son in freshman year, he would do finish all his homework on, while coming back on the bus. So um, these are, and you'd be surprised how they do it. And, and it actually gives you assurance that, okay, here's somebody I was looking at very, very little, but all of a sudden I see that change happening, right? So, um, and it gives you a lot of like the, that, that the dynamic that the parent has with their child uh, changes drastically in a very positive way. So this is something that I can say from experience. Thank you. Um, and I, I would also just say one of the, just because I know that some schools have moved to a, a later start time. And, and one of our challenges is the, um, how large our district is, right? Um, so we have students coming from very far away. So um, it'd be nice to, you know, get up a little bit later, but they would also be getting home. They'd be traveling during rush hour from far away. And then, um, you know, also going home in that, so getting home really late as well. So it's a, uh, unfortunately, because our district is so spread out geographically, it's, it's, it's definitely a, an added layer of challenge um, from like the local high school would be. Okay, um, we're going to keep going fast because we have a lot of questions. Um, one is about um, from Beth Saunders. Um, what's the percentage of uh, students who get their first choice for their CTE major? And also, is there a minor option for like their second choice? Right, two great questions. First question, um, the majority the majority of students get their first choice, I believe in the, so our freshmen have not declared their majors yet. So I, I couldn't tell you um, the sophomore class or so our current sophomores, there were 182 of them um, to start. So probably a similar size class to this upcoming year, maybe 94% um, uh, of them got their first choice. I will tell you that the program design and visual communications is the most popular program in the school. And something around of that 6% of students who don't get their first choice, something like four or 5% of them are in that one program. They want to be in DVC. So, um, and then the minor question, no students are not allowed, are not able to minor. Um, there's, these are, it's because they're programs versus like, these are not just elective classes. So they, they simply don't have enough. They, it takes them so long to get through the actual major that they wouldn't have time uh, for a minor. We may try to look and see if we can add some like, you know, classes, if you will, um, maybe someday, but we haven't you've gotten to that point yet. So that's a, that's a pretty common question though. So that's a good one. You also can't double major just to kind of go along with the, the minor question. Okay, Jonathan Silverman says he has a seventh grader who would like to attend open house, but reservations are only for eighth graders. Should he wait until next year? Nope, just put down eighth grade. It's just for the reg. It's just the platform we use to make sure that seventh graders don't apply. It's the same, same platform as uh, applying. So, just put eighth grade, and we'll see you on. We'll love to see you on Sunday. No, you can never start too early looking into your options. We'd love to have you. Um, there was a question about whether or not we're a public school. Yes, we are a public school, and we are free. Um, the next question is Yulian Lazaroff. Uh, for students on the college track, can you comment on the top colleges they end up after attending Minuteman? Yeah, so it's it's interesting. I mean, we've had students in like engineering go to Carnegie Mellon, um, which is one of the top engineering schools in the country. Um, we've had students go to Ivy League schools in the past. It's not really what I would say is the uh, the most common thing. A lot of students going to you know like uh, WP, sorry, like the the alphabet soup of engineering schools, right? So uh, Worcester Polytech. Uh, Rensselaer Polytech, uh, Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, our valedictorian went to uh, UVA last year. Um, 
uh, Devlin, where'd he go? He went to Olin College, which is this really unique engineering school in Needham, uh, which is, is actually the top engineering school for non-doctoral programs in the country. Um, um, you know, some liberal arts schools, Boston College, Northeastern. Um, I had an interesting conversation with some really high achieving students in biotechnology and, and one of them wants to go to Tufts. And he talked about, he could go to, you know, really any school that he wants to, frankly, if you've ever met this young man, he's uh, remarkable. And he just talked about this was the best fit for him. Tufts was, right? It's a more experiential learning campus. It's more collaborative in nature. Like he's done his research and he knows himself and what is best for him, right? So he's not interested in the vanity of the name. He's interested in like what the best fit is for him. So I, I thought that was really neat and unique that a, a young person would have that that level of self awareness. Um, but I, I and you can email me and I'll send you a list of all the colleges students have been accepted into in the last two years um, from the different programs. So you can see that as well. So just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to uh, uh, shoot that over to you. It's on the admissions page uh, as well. Oh. Yep, uh, for this past year. Um, there's another question. It just says diversity question mark. So I'm thinking maybe if you could speak to uh, how we approach diversity at Minuteman. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, if, if just like from a statistical standpoint, we're about 76 percent um, uh, white students and then, um, you know, nine percent uh, Latino students. Um, and then 4% uh, African-American, 4% Asian, um, and then 6% uh, multiracial. So, um, you know, we're working on a lot of things right now. We've had teachers, you know, of course, do professional development around, um, you know, creating a culturally responsive classroom. Um, we have, uh, we, we really are trying to be intentional anytime we add new um, literature to be, you know, to have, um, a diversity of uh, authors and protagonists. And, and we try to be really intentional about that. Um, all of our curriculum goes through something called the Washington model, which um, it, it's named after the state, not um, not the, the president. Um, and it's uh, examines all curriculum for bias. That's just some kind of like curriculum based type things. Um, we have a group of uh, teachers, faculty, staff, or sorry, fa staff, faculty, administrators, students, parents, um, that's called the IDEA, the Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Access um, Task Force or group. Um, and we just did a climate survey today, survey today, um, and we want to really utilize that information to, to um, to uh, develop a, a long-term strategic plan to, um, you know, make this a more welcoming community for, for all students um, and to be really intentional about that. Um, we're looking into um, in, improving our hiring practices and our recruitment of, of, of teachers of color as well. So those are some of the steps. It's obviously, you know, continues to be something that we are, we think is important and that we want to continue to work on, uh, but there's still a lot of work to be done and uh you know that's 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 where we're at with that but i'm glad thank you for that question if that's the, if that's what the question was um the next question is about covering academic ground uh how do you cover the same academic ground as a traditional high school when you're half in shop half in academics yeah for sure so you know every school is required to cover the same standards um because we take the mcas just like all of our um like all the all the high schools in massachusetts um you know you might see more depth in something at a traditional high school because they have the time to go into it where we might cover more of the uh, breadth of the same standards. Um, and again, like I mentioned in the presentation, you're actually applying all of that information in your career and technical education week. So it's not like you don't do math in electrical wiring, go into electrical wiring. And if you take a look, you're going to see the circuits out there. It's the same thing you do in AP physics classes, right? So um, that's how you do it. And I could, I'll, and again, if that if anyone wants to email me, I'll send you um, two of our form, our alumna who um, did little videos of how they were prepared for college. Um, one graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering from Fairfield. She's an airdrop engineer at the Natick Labs, um, so the military base here. Um, and the other one just finished her master's in astronautics at Stanford, and she had done her undergrad at Smith. So they're, you know, we cover, you know, similar information, the same information, you know, and, and we get the opportunity to apply it in a practical setting. Um, so it's a great question. And it's the one I get often, but it, it, it's, um, it, it's probably a little more breadth and depth than the traditional subject matter. Um, we also all freshmen do take English and math for 180 days. So they take it during both weeks, um, their freshman year. 
that's another way that we make sure. Yeah, that's an important point. Yeah. Um, next question is about the town of Lexington change or public schools in Lexington change their standards based report cards so middle school students don't get A, B, and C yep. grades anymore. How does that work? Yep. So we uh, can translate any narrative report card. We've been doing it for years with um, some niche public schools who do narratives or uh, standard based report cards. Um, so really, we look at anything that is. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what the terms are on this Lexington report card. I, they had it last year as well. Um, but just think of it as you're, if you're meeting the standards, you know, if you're right at them, that's like a C, right? So, you, so since we changed it to be A through C is all the same, you know, as long as you're um, uh, kind of at the, the middle level or right around it, you're going to get the top, the top uh, academic points. Uh, so that, that was a good change in the, acad uh, the admissions policy um, to, to easily translate those grades. Yuri Makovich asks, what special education services are available at Minuteman? Uh, I have a child who's currently on an AEP. Will they re continue to receive services? Yep. Uh, so we are a full inclusion model. Uh, a, a number of our students are on IEPs. They will receive those accommodations. And if there are any modifications, um, both during their core academic time, as well as in their career and technical education major. Um, most students um, have like an academic, well, pretty much all these students on an IEP have an academic support class, which is a scheduled period um, during uh, every core academic week where they have a special education um, liaison a teacher um, who works in a small group. It's uh, eight students at the most, um, you know, working towards their goals. And then, you know, other services, uh, speech, language, um, like social prag, uh, you know, really any, so really you have your services delivered. Um, it's just uh, the, how it's delivered might be slightly different, but uh, you know, that's all within kind of a full inclusion model. So I'm gonna keep skipping over questions we covered already. Um, what percentage of kids that attended ninth grade transfer after the first year? Yeah, so it varies and COVID's probably not the best time to figure it out because students who you know, wanted to be in this building doing hands-on learning uh, did it less than they you know, wanted to. Um, it's usually like 5%. Um, so of a class of, so the, the sophomore class um, was 182, it dipped. I think I accepted maybe like five or six transfers um, to kind of build it back up, but it's yeah, five, five, six percent, maybe uh, give or take. So at this point in the presentation, we had some technical difficulties and we lost our uh, Zoom feed. Uh, our parent group did a phenomenal job and continued answering questions um, as they were, you know, obviously from coming in from home. Uh, so we don't have any recording kind of after, you know, where we cut off there. But I did want to just take a second to thank uh, Radhika, Courtney, uh, Kara, and Srividya for the time uh, in sharing their experience here at Minuteman. I wanted to thank Dan O'Brien, who's our Director of Communications, who was reading and monitoring the Q&A. I want to thank Drew O'Connor, who's our multimedia engineering teacher, who's helping produce this event. And I want to thank the, you know, 10 students who are here on a Monday night um, when they didn't have to be to kind of, you know, put this whole thing into production, working the cameras, the sound, the lights, you know, just doing a phenomenal job. And, and they, they want to be here and, and they're willing to come back at night just to do things like this. So it's really a testament to them. And I, I just want to, you know, express my gratitude to everyone who kind of made this uh, possible. Uh, you know, any questions that weren't answered tonight during the, the, the family information session, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can reach me at uh, achiriello at minuteman.org. If you just go on the website and, and find my name, you can click on that. You can call the admissions office at 781-861-6500 and select option two, and you can get in touch with Sue as well. Um, so, you know, please reach out to us with any questions. We're always more than happy to help you. Um, and so I, I hope to see you soon. Please apply. Make sure you do that before February 15th, as I discussed in the presentation. That's the priority deadline for our member town students. And if you are uh, from out of district, you're going to want to make sure you get your, um, all your materials done uh, by March 15th. So again, please always feel to free to reach out. It was great talking to everyone tonight.